Hi friends, Miss Petra here, and I am wearing a fancy dress today. That's because we're gonna read a book about the symphony orchestra. So Bennett, this book is for you, buddy. Mm -hmm. And it is called The Remarkable Farkle McBride by John Lithgow. Now, before I read this book, I want to share with you a couple of instruments. So, in the book, there are many orchestra instruments that the remarkable Farkle McBride is gonna play. And one of them is this instrument. Yeah, many of you who come to Poco Music will recognize this. This is the violin. Yeah, and with the violin, it has this little chin rest. So we lift our chin up and we put it right here. Now, I cannot play the violin, but with my bow, here's my bow, I can make sounds from it. The violin is part of the strings family. So is the viola and the cello and the double bass. This is the baby of the strings family, the violin. And this is the big daddy, the double bass. So with the bow, when we run it across, it makes a deep, low sound. Wow. Because it's so low, we like to say double bass. Yeah. What is this? It is a trumpet. Yeah. And this is part of the brass family. The trombone and the tuba are also part of the brass family. I wish I had the trombone with me today, but I do not. So this part right here is the mouthpiece. And if we blow into it, nothing, nothing happens. So we have to press our lips up to it and we have to pretend like we're going to spit out watermelon seeds from our lips and go like that. Or we can go like elephant sound and go so you take a breath and go <laughs> so listen so when I put the mouthpiece here the air goes all the way around the tubing and it comes out the bell and again I can't play this but I can make a sound Not a pretty sound, but I can make a sound. <laughs> so remember, you have to put your lips together and go like an elephant. Ta -da! This instrument is the clarinet. It is part of the woodwind family. The flute, the oboe, and the bassoon are also part of the woodwind family. This instrument requires a little reed, a little fine piece of wood that comes from a bamboo tree, and it goes right here on the mouthpiece. This is a very old instrument, and it kind of needs some new love and care, so we don't have a reed for it, and it doesn't have all of the corking, so it won't play. But you blow air, and the reed vibrates against this part, and then you can play. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This instrument is part of the percussion family. Yeah! It is a snare drum! And the great thing about a snare drum is on the bottom, it has little chains, a little piece of jewelry that makes the drum sound like a marching drum because it vibrates onto the bottom and shakes the chain. So, let's start our book. And I want you to point out when you see some of these instruments in the book. So, we're gonna read The Remarkable Farkle McBride by John Lithgow, illustrated by C.F. Payne. 
Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instruments poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. Oh, look at that face. Oh my gosh, that is frustrated. Can you make that face? Good job. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing the superb violin. There he is, upstairs, playing the violin while his family listens below. He went readily, deedily, deedily, dee with all the strings at his side. Readily, deedily, deedily, dee, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more, in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up the rosin, ripped up every score. He threw the fiddle on the living room floor. He shouted, enough of your screeching. Oh no, look at that. It's broken. That's sad. When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift and he rapidly mastered the flute. There he is in his bedroom window and he is playing the flute. Yeah, and there's a little bird singing with him, too. He went rudely, tootly, tootly, too, with all the winds at his side. Rudely, tootly, tootly, too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. There he is. He's playing the flute. But at six, Farkle flung the flute into the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy, whiny, and shrill. And there it is where he threw it into the lake and the large mouth bass are going, whoa. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He is playing the trombone. That instrument is part of the brass family, mm -hmm. like we played the trumpet. Yeah. He went voom, petty, doom, petty, doom, petty, doom, with all the brass at his side. Voom, petty, doom, petty, doom, petty, doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away. I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. And there it is. Oh no, he threw it in the garbage can. Oh, that is so sad. His mother's like, ooh. When Farco was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection, for Farco learned the xylophone, cymbals, and drums, the entire percussionist section. There he is. He is playing the drums. He went boom, bash, clang and a clash with all the clamor he could provide. Tinkly, bing bong, bumpity crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed, the crash and the boom, and the clang and the bang of the battery. 
Oh, look at that face. He's so frustrated. His head is between the two symbols and he's going, oh. Yeah, I think he's kind of frustrated. Poor Farkle at 10, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then, ding, he discovered his favorite sounds, musicians all playing together. What instruments do you see over here? I see the tuba and the trumpet and the clarinet and oboe and the violin and the viola and the bassoon. Wow. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farco was told. Your cooperation is vital. He's like, hmm? Me? Well, oh, there he is. Oh, he's standing in front of the orchestra. The orchestra is on this side. The audience is on that side. So he took the baton. There it is in his hand. And he gave a downbeat. And kaboom, the foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went readily, rudely, boom, pity, bang. Bravo, the spectators cried. Diddly, doodly, doom, pity, clang. The remarkable Marco McGraw. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride. Maestro? That's what they call conductors. Hmm. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings. And remarkable Farkle is at last. Satisfied. Oh, there he is. Oh my goodness. Right there. And he has such a big smile on his face. He is the conductor of this great big orchestra. What instruments do you see? I see the violin. I see a harp. I see cellos and double basses, and I see the brass instruments and the percussion instruments. Oh my goodness, such an exciting moment. Well, Farkle received this beautiful bouquet from his parents. It says, to Farkle, love mom and dad, the end. And there he is the remarkable John Lithgow. That's the guy who wrote this book. <laughs> well, thank you friends for reading this book with me. I loved it. And Bennett, one day I'm gonna see you conducting an orchestra or leading a marching band. And I will be in the crowd going, bravo, bravo. <laughs> so I will see all of you a different time and, have a great day.